So up until this point, we've been using Cobb Douglas production functions. And uh, here we're going to do a couple examples using perfect substitutes and perfect complements instead. The math you'll see is very similar to what we were working with in the consumer choice section. But I just want to go through the interpretation in terms of production because it is a little bit different. So for perfect substitutes, uh, it's difficult maybe to think of labor and capital as perfect substitutes, but I'm sure that you can imagine a business that has a choice between two different input products that are very closely substitutable and they need to decide which one to use in production. So remember that we're going to have a corner solution here because the slope of our ISO quant curve will be constant our marginal technical rate of substitution is constant and so we're not going to have a tangency between the ISO cost and ISO quant curves. Instead, we need to figure out which of these inputs give us the biggest bang for our buck. So we'd like to know which gives us the largest marginal product per dollar. So we'll take the marginal product of labor divided by the wage and compare that to the marginal product of capital divided by the rent. So for each unit of labor, our marginal product is 10 units of output and the cost of labor is $8 per unit. So that gives me, that's 1.25. And then my marginal product of capital is 20 over the cost of capital is $20 per unit. So that gives me one, $1 per unit of output basically. Um, whereas labor produces 1.25 units of output per dollar. So we get more output per dollar using labor than we do using capital. And that's true for any level of production. And so we will simply just use labor instead of capital in this production process. Uh, and then we need to decide how much labor and we can get that by looking at our production function. So we'd like to produce 100 units of output. So we are going to use 10 units of labor and zero units of capital. And I'll just remind you what that looks like on the graph. So here our isoquant would be, it takes 10 units of labor to produce 100 units of output or five units of capital to produce 100 units of output um, or some combination in the middle. And um, our ISO um, cost curve here is uh, it's going to give us a total cost of, let's see, 8 times 10 or 80. That's our total cost. So for $80, we could get 10 units of labor or we could get 4 units of capital. Okay. So this is our ISO quant here, Q equals 100. And our ISO cost curve is total cost equals 80. You can see, right, this would be the lowest total cost curve that still intersects our ISO quant. All right, so for perfect substitutes, um, you're going to get the corner solution. You want to compare your bang for your buck, right, your marginal product per dollar for each input, and then choose the one that gives you the most output per dollar. For perfect complements, now we need both labor and capital together in order to produce output, and any extra of one input or the other is not going to help us at all. So um, we need to think about those L-shaped indifference curves, and most importantly, the ray that connects the uh, the kink points or the optimal capital labor ratio. And you'll recall from consumption that to find the optimal capital ra labor ratio, what we need to do is set equal the terms within our minimum function. So here, if I set them equal, I get L equals K, 
which is the same as saying that K over L is equal to one. That's our optimal capital labor ratio. And then I can uh, plug that into my production function to find the, the optimal amount of, um, of labor and capital that I need. So here I would like to produce a thousand units of this product. And so I set that equal to my production function. And so I've got a thousand divided by 50 is 20. And that's got to be equal to the minimum of L and K. I know those things are equal to each other. So this has got to be equal to L star equal to K star. And so I can see here I'm using 20 units of each product. And the total cost of that would be 20 times $1 plus 20 times $2, which gives me a total cost of 60. Notice that the optimal capital labor ratio does not depend on the prices. And so um, what we have here is our IA, so cost curve 60. I could afford 30 units of capital or 60 units of labor, but I need to consume them at the same amount, right? I want them to be equal to each other. And so I end up here to produce my thousand units of output. Okay, so for perfect substitutes, you wanna look at the bang for buck, right? Highest marginal product per dollar spent. And for perfect complements, you wanna set equal the terms in the minimum function to find your optimal capital labor ratio.